Go ahead and use a pry tool to go ahead and remove our center cap. Use a 19 millimeter socket to loosen and remove the lug nuts. Remove the wheel and set it aside. We want to go ahead and remove our cotter pin that is going through our upper ball joint castle nut here. Just gonna use some pliers. I'm gonna try and wiggle this around a little bit. Our cotter pin is not coming out. We're simply going to use some cutters. We're gonna snip these. Snip them off, break them off. Using our 22 millimeter swivel socket with an extension, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this nut on the upper ball joint. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this not on just a couple threads here. Just enough we can see the bolt coming through the castle nut here, and right there. Now at this point here, you have your vehicle supported on jack stands. We recommend using a jack underneath your lower control arm. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna raise up the jack just so that it touches the control arm. The reason for that is that once we release this upper control arm, the spring for the suspension is gonna to wanna to push that lower control arm down. So you're just gonna support that lower control arm. We're using our screw jack here and we're just going to spin that up just to get pressure on that control arm. And that is it. Using a pickle fork, I'm gonna go between the ball joint and the knuckle. And we wanna go ahead and separate the ball joint from the knuckle. Now at this point here, our nut worked as a capture nut to keep that control arm from popping up. We're now gonna go ahead and remove that nut using our ratchet. We're gonna use a 22 millimeter socket to go ahead and remove the nut on the ball joint. Then we're gonna go ahead and use a pry bar to lift up and separate that unit there. Now we're gonna go ahead and lower our screw jack here. Do it slowly. You have your tie rod end and your sway bar end link still attached. So it should maintain the stability of all your components here. We're gonna use our trim tool. We wanna to remove our inner fender liner. So we're just going to reach up between here and the liner and pop out our buttons on the other side. Pry and tap. And do this for the remaining of the buttons. Go ahead and remove our liner here. Now what we're gonna do is use an 18 millimeter wrench to remove the nut right here. And we're gonna remove the nut on the forward mounted stud as well, holding the control arm to the chassis. Now when we remove this here, there are shims, alignment shims placed between the control arm and this unit right here. So you wanna pay attention to those there. So when we remove that nut, things come loose. We're gonna pull those out and set those aside. Same for the front side. That way then when we put it back together, it'll give us our preliminary alignment and we'll be all set. Our nut and bolt were pretty rusty. We did apply a little bit of heat with some rust penetrant to go ahead and get that nut loose. Once we get this nut 
removed, we'll go ahead and move to the forward bolt and get that nut removed from there. We'll go ahead and set that aside. We'll spin off that back nut here. Using a 15, 16 socket, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this nut here. And we're gonna loosen the nut on the rear side. That's gonna allow us to go ahead and push this control arm upward a little bit easier. With the control arm lifted up and the nuts removed, the control arm is pushed in, we can reach in and we're gonna remove our alignment shims Do the same for the back. It looks like we had three shims on the back side and two on the front. Now we're using a pry bar to go ahead and pop off our little locking star here. We're gonna do the same for the front stud and we'll get those bolts removed. Using a 15 16 socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen these studs. Now you can go ahead and remove your control arm. Using a 15 16 socket, we're going to go ahead and loosen and remove this nut here. Remove that washer, repeat for the other side. So what we wanna do is push our bushing out of the control on this way here. We have another bushing on this side that needs to come outward as well, and that will loosen up our spindle here. We're gonna use our air hammer here to try and push us through. And what I'm doing is working my way around to push in our bushing sleeve and work this out. Go ahead and work on this side here. Let's go ahead and clean up our control arms here where our new sleeves are going to go. I'm going to use a little bit of sandpaper on the inside here. I'm gonna go ahead and press our bushing into the control arm. Now we're gonna go ahead and use our press to push the bushing onto the control arm and around our spindle here. and release our press. Let's go ahead and install our washers. You want the cup side facing inward. Get the nut started. Using our 15, 16 socket, we're gonna go ahead and bottom out this nut. We 
We're gonna go ahead and torque our bushing nuts down here to 50 foot pounds. Now on your particular vehicle, you wanna go ahead and research that and make sure that you get your proper torque specs on this here. And we're going with 50 on ours. When installing your upper control arm, the beam here is gonna go on the back side of this chassis piece here. The bolt is gonna go through the front. Once that goes through, you need to install your alignment shims over the stud, and then the bolt will go through the control arm here, and then the nut will go on the back side. I'm gonna do that for both the front and back. Let's go ahead and get this installed. And once you get the control arm up into place and you start feeding your bolt through, go ahead and reach around the other side. Get that nut started on the other side. Once that's started, go ahead and get your rear bolt in. Push that through, get that nut started. Now I wanna go ahead and tighten up these bolts here, but before you do that, we have to install our shims. Our shims go behind the chassis plate here, but between the control arm beam here, our pivot. Now drop that down into place and pull our control arm forward. I'm going to use our 18 millimeter wrench on the nut side. And then we're just gonna snug this up. I wanna go ahead and do the same for the back. Take your alignment shims and get those installed. Once those are in, we'll go ahead and tighten that bolt down next. Now that we have our back bolt tightened down nice and tight, we'll come back to the front one and do the same here. Now, when we first removed these bolts, we had our little lock washers here. You don't have to reinstall them, but we were able to uh, salvage ours. We're just gonna line it up in place, put a socket over it. It's a little bit larger. Tap those on. I'm go ahead and install our piece here. I'm going to tuck this up into place. You basically just feed the button through the other side and we're going to press that through and on. Continue this process for the rest of your buttons. You can go ahead and tuck this in. Now with the vehicle still support on your jack stands, you're going to go ahead and put your jack under your control arm. This is just gonna make it easier. You're gonna go ahead and lift up your suspension here. Now we're not gonna lift the vehicle off of your jack stands. We just wanna compress that suspension. And what we're gonna be doing is bringing this ball joint into the knuckle. Tap that ball joint in and install your washer. You know, pay attention to where the hole is in the ball joint shaft there, because we're gonna put a cotter pin in that next. Once you get that nut started, we'll go ahead and tighten that down. Let's go ahead and torque our upper nut here to 61 foot-pounds. 
Now at this point here, we want to go ahead and notch, align up the notch in our castle nut with the hole on the ball joint stud here. So you don't want to ever loosen this to get that to line up. We're going to go ahead and tighten this up a little bit more to get that to line, line up. Now you want to take your carter pin. I'm going to feed this through. I'm going to take our lower tab here, bend that down underneath. I'm going to go ahead and cut off our excess here. and install your wheel. Get all of our lug nuts started by hand. Once these are all on, I'm gonna go ahead and snug those down. Go ahead and torque our wheels down to 95 foot-pounds. Install your center cap by lining up the little ports here with your lug nuts and pop it on. 